Here's the steering rack off the um, 1969 Triumph for Test Mark II. Pretty sure they're pretty much identical to any, any small chassis Triumph, but um, anyway, that's what this one's off of. Um, yeah, these steering rack gators, um, they were cheap. They weren't, uh, they're about half the price of those ones. And uh, here we are. Um, they're buggered. And they're not, they haven't got oily, as you can see, they're not um, still, they're dusty. So it's not like it's oil that's done it. It's, um, they're just little bits. Too dry, I don't know, I don't know how um, the chemical makeup of rubber or whatever works, but um, they're just dry. Felt a bit. Track lens were new last time, they're still looking okay, there's no visible play in the steering, so I think what I might do, just for funs, kicks and giggles or whatever you want to say, um, or shits and giggles, um, is I'm going to have a look at, uh, see if I can get some grease, get the, get the rack cleaned and get some grease into it. Um, I haven't actually stripped down a, a steering rack since I was at college, so um, we had to do it there to pass a, an exam. Haven't done it since, because uh, to be honest, it's, uh, it's really not worth it. You just buy a new rack and you chuck it on, and off you go. So, but since this is old Vincent, and we love old Vincent, we're going to take his steering rack to bits and have a look in there and. Uh, Make sure he's all looking all nice in there. I think a new brand, well, a reconditioned steering rack for, for Vincent is about 90 quid. It was not a lot of money. So, uh, but we'll, we'll take it apart. There's, there is no, there's no play that um, I know of. The MOT test, I didn't find any play last time. So, but it's worth, um, I think it's worth getting some nice fresh grease into him, into the ball joints and stuff, you know. So, we'll get him apart and we'll have a look. Now, I don't know any truth in this, um, but it's just an observation, purely an observation. It's just come into my head. Um, I've mentioned before when I was when I was a kid, I worked in a garage. Um, the garage predominantly worked on um, British Leyland cars of some description or other, because the boss had left. Um, a British Leyland garage that he would he had served an apprenticeship at and took a lot of the customers with him when he left. Um, they happened to be quite old customers, and uh, so it's kind of how I come around to uh, end up working on things like these old Triumphs and stuff as a kid. Rather than well, we did have we did have customers with nice modern cars, but predominantly it was old cars. Anyway, um, and it's a stupid observation. Um, and it's um, this is how my brain works. We used to count off the turns. If we put a new track rod end, track rod end on um, one of the cars, we used to count off the turns, and a piece of chalk uh, mark the inner um, inner wheel arch, inner wheel well, with the amount of turns. And it is this is just a stupid observation. There's probably no truth in it, but 99% of the cars. 99.9% .9 of the cars were always 11 turns. 11 complete turns off the threads. Isn't that weird? Except for the ones like uh, young lads minis that have gone and got into the hedges and stuff and sort of bent the subframe a bit. They'd be a bit different quite often. But um, yeah, 99% of the time they were always um, 11 turns off the off the track rod arm. Track rod arm. Yeah. Useless information. Okay, so we got um, got uh, our ball joint on the end, and um, our steering rack. My opinion: if I get a pair of nice mold grips that aren't too, uh, you want to do this lightly, otherwise you bugger the splines up.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind it out in a minute and uh, have a look in there and uh, make sure there's nothing broken or scratched or buggered. Just a really quick note. Um, if you're checking for play in your steering rack, you don't generally have any play. Um, play doesn't usually show when it's on full lock anywhere. It's um, just generally when it's uh, in the centre position. That's the end, and I can't, literally can't feel a tiniest bit of movement anywhere. The other lock again can't find any feel any movement at all feels tight back off that bit a bit we're off now to get Jess alright it's in a bit okay, um, yeah can't feel any play at all so just count the turns two three four four turns so I'll go back to two so that should be about the center point and now I can feel a little tiny bit of play if you're close enough you will hear it I don't know if you might see it but you might be able to hear it well you can see it I suppose, can't you See it or not? Anyway, it's about, I'd say, four, about five thousand play, maybe a bit more. So, um, yeah, the position for checking the play is in the centre, not the ends. It's the same with steering boxes, they're pretty much the same, but. Anyway, where are we going? Where we are? Yeah. So, you know, we're going to just knock these two solid joints off, and then we'll draw it out for a, um, draw the pinion out as well, and have a look at that. I'm not a fan of using these things for anything other than pipes, but I haven't got a spanner big enough. It's, um, it's about a thirty. 35 mil, 34 mil, whatever that is in Imperial, inch and maybe inch and an eighth, something like that. And I haven't got any inch and an eighth for spanners. So. Got to get all gnarly with it. It's tight enough actually. So in the end it's a cup and there's the spring. But see as that um We'll take that apart in a minute. Um, seeing as that uh, um, steering rack gator was split, it's definitely a good idea to wash it out and get all the grit out of it and re grease it. Obviously, try and avoid um, crushing this. Stupid thing to say, I know, but. Gotta be said. What wrestling this is.
might end up doing the wrong one, a little rascal. But tab washer over first. Not really mad because it's got to come off anyway, isn't it? Oh. I'm sure the ground's getting further away as I get older. Is that possible? I think there's one more around there. No, that's right, that's still one. some shims in there as well so we could take some shims out if we needed to if it's got too much play these are almost identical to um, top and bottom swivels on a mini if anybody has done a mini suspension the old classic mini that is rather than the, the modern one okay Should be able to break that off there now. Be careful not to damage the threads. One of them things, it's not how I want to take it off, but it's how it, it wanted to come off. So. Okay, so that's the swivel joint complete that back together again. Pretty sure they're the same length, so it doesn't matter if we do mix them up. Yeah, they're the same length. Get these in for the parts washer for cleaning up purposes. Strip them down and put them back together at the same time. I think. Well, this wire on Triumph, just out of um, interest, is the earth strap for the uh, horn connection, the ground strap. So it has to come round and it joins onto where the um, rack mount is. To make the connection for the um, because it's rubber mounted, obviously. And uh, it um, makes a connection for the for the horn. Okay. Just screw the um, just off the bottom. Hopefully. I'm pretty sure there should be a smell of spring and a um, cup on this as well, I think, if I remember. So we're talking of 30 years ago here, Jets. 30? Yeah, pretty much 30 years ago. So. I already remember things about half an hour ago, so. 
Okay, yeah, so we've got another, another spring. That means there'll be another cup in there, so. Hopefully should be hooked out. Been a wee bit stubborn. So that's the cup that provides attention on the pinion. Presses basically presses down on the um, on the back of the rack. Get some circlip in there. Yeah, so we just grab that. Let me get set up with my circlet, back, bring it back in a second. Okay, I just bought these the other day. Um, only ever had uh, about 10 sets of uh, circlet pliers in the past for internal, external, straight, and whatever. And these are supposed to be able to do it all. Um, I know they've been around a long time, but I've never had them before. So uh, we'll see how they go. They don't um, look very sturdy to me. They, uh, you know what I mean? They've got a little clippy thing that uh, folds over, which is quite good, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, not sure about that. We'll see. Anyway, if they work, they work. I can't complain. So you've got a circlet down in your that. Uh, Else pinning in. I'm going to say this is all uh, dragging the memory banks here from 30 years ago, so you have to bear with me if I start acting like a buffoon and doing it wrong. You know, one person in particular will uh, tell me, bless him, but I'm glad he does because he catches me out <laughs> and that makes me do it right, so that's good. Like I said, I've always said this is uh, aluminium, so you've got to be a bit careful, I guess, knocking it around too much. So we'll just set it up in the voice, gentle. Let's see if it will tap out. Try and be you rascals can see, can you? Moving, so that's a good sign, isn't it? Let's do it that way, so hopefully the bits, any bits fall out, fall on the bench. We've got to a point and stop, so maybe it's just done a corrosion.
I'll knock the bush pack out first. That's what I reckon. Oh yeah, look. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so there's your opinion. Just to tell really how dirty or clean it is at the moment, but um, or how worn it is, but initial uh, inspection looking pretty good. So anyway, there's opinion. Excuse me for sniffing. Okay, so that means the rack will only come out one way. Just towards the pinion. It's all looking pretty good at the moment. Machine marks are all on there. Okay, so we'll get this stuff cleaned up and then uh, we'll put it all back together. together. <coughs> 